Welcome. My name is Crystal Ray, and I'd like to thank you for joining this, this Seattle Chapter SDA webinar, Managing Your Inbox, Tips and tri Tricks for More Efficient Use of Outlook. Our presenter today is Carrie Thompson from Studio Meng Strazera. In Carrie's 19 plus years, she has brought a wide variety of skills to the company. As the Director of Administration, she's responsible for the overall administrative operations, managing financial plans and, and budgets, coordinating contracts processes, overseeing administrative staff, and supervising human resource procedures. Carrie serves on the Board of Directors for the Society of Design Administrators, Seattle Chapter, holding several positions over the past years. If you have any questions for Carrie during the webinar, please type in the chat box. Don't forget to fill in the sign-in sheet and return it to Carrie via the email shown at the bottom of the sheet. Carrie, the time is yours. All right, thank you, Crystal. I'm gonna mute mm -hmm. your line. Okay, so you guys should only be able to hear me now. All right, uh, thank you, everybody. Um, I want to preface this with uh, my little disclaimer. Um, <laughs> these are on-the-job learnings that I'm going to be sharing with you guys. I do get a lot of email every day, um, upwards of 100 sometimes, and I have had to pick up a lot of tips and tricks along the way to keep from just being buried in, in, in all that email. So I'm going to show you some things. I have a little outline I'm going to follow. So if I pause funny, it's because I'm marking off things on my outline. Um, if you have questions, go ahead and throw them in the chat box, but hopefully I answer most of them as we go. And um, here we go. Okay, I'm gonna go over some basics first in the basic email. Those of you who are new to Outlook may not know some of these. Those of you who have used Outlook for a long time might, but I'm gonna go ahead and go over some that um, I have found useful just to remember that are available to you. The first and foremost, is right up here in the top of your home email page, you can quickly sort your emails by unread. So if you have a lot of unread emails and they're buried you know, months or years down, you can quickly screen out everything else just by hitting this unread button. It's kind of a nice way just to like, whoop, what have I forgotten to look at and how far back am I on catching up on my email? So that's just a nice little thing to remember that it's up there and uh, works in any folder that you're in in your email. The other thing is, one of the things that I have learned is to streamline what I see and only to see what's important to me. One of the things you can do is customize these column headers across the top here, uh, minimize what you don't use and add columns that might be useful to you. For example, I added this one, but it's one that I don't use, reminder. It's a little column, I don't use it a whole lot. You can take any of these out with a simple right click right click, remove this column, it just cleans up your view a little bit to, to reduce the clutter that you have. If you don't use categories, you don't use you know, tasks, you can get rid of all of these and, and only see what's really important to you. If you wanna add a column, if there's something that you really want to be keeping track of and you, you don't have it up here, again, a right click field chooser will let you come in to Outlook's standard list of fields that you can add. Um, like maybe you want to see who's copied on emails you get. You can, you can add fields by selecting it and dragging it to your top bar here. So now you can see quickly if anybody was CC'd on an email that was sent to you. So if that's a useful thing to you, you can add it. If it's not, just, just get rid of it. Um, Outlook here has frequently used fields, but you can, there's a lot of fields you can add. Uh, <laughs> there's quite a few. I like a more simple view, so I don't have a whole lot of these turned on. But this is a, this is a useful thing to help you organize what's, what's in your view. All right. The other thing, I don't know if you noticed, I'm using Outlook 2016. And um, I have my little navigation bar here on the bottom left set to compact. Yours might not look like this. Yours might look like this. You might have the big mail calendar people tasks. Um, I prefer a smaller bar because this big gray bar at the bottom here just you know, wipes out yet another email that I could be looking at. So I go here to the navigation options and I prefer the compact view. You can turn that on. You can also rearrange the view 
of these little icons, which order. So for me, mail is the primary one that I'm spending my time in. I want it to be first here on the left. But if your primary job is calendaring, for example, you could move that up to the top of your list. It will then show up on the leftmost corner and just make it easier for you to get to right away. If you never use tasks, you can remove the number of items in this navigation bar um, by reducing the number that show up here. So maybe you only use three. Maybe calendar, mail, and, and people are the only things you ever use in Outlook. Get rid of the extra. Just, just streamline it a bit so that you only see what's important to you. I'm going to put mine back on compact view because that's what I'm used to. And I'm going to rearrange my mail. Okay, so now my navigation bar is nice and small. I've gained a little bit of extra visibility here along the bottom of my screen. The other thing in the email here, basic view, is this little favorites box up here at the top. I've got three things in my favorite box, but they're, they're set for different things. Um, this top one is simply putting my SDA email folder up at the top for easy access. I use a lot of folders. I'm going to click this and expand this. I use a lot of folders to manage my email, and SDA comes way down here, not by, uh, not by order of importance, but that's where it is on my list. It's pretty low, and uh, I wanted to be able to keep an eye on it quickly, so I right-clicked on it, click Add to Favorites, and it will show up in the top of your list. Now, it's already in my favorites, so I'd be removing it. Let me pick a different one for you. So let's say this is my boss. So if I really want to keep up with my emails on my boss, I could put show in favorites. Now his folder is up here. It's just a link to get it in this favorite box to make it quicker to access. I take him back out. I don't need to look at him that closely. I also have this King County folder. This one is set up a little bit differently, and I'm going to come back to that one a little bit later. Um, but it is still a favorite, but this has some additional rules tied to it, and I'll explain those later as we go. In your view here, how your email is presented, you have options on how this looks. I have mine set to a conversation view. I get these little down arrows, and it is grouping all emails that have to do with this subject line into a chain, just like Gmail does. And that's under the View tab up here at the top of your, of your Outlook window. Conversations is something you can turn on and turn off. If you like that nested view, it can be really handy to keep track of a string of conversations, like this was a particular project. There's a string of emails behind this one, um, and they are going to be kept together for me. So if I'm watching this particular project, I can quickly find the emails that go with it, rather than drilling down through lots and lots of emails. Um, so that's conversations, very easy to turn on and off. If I turn it off, you'll see my email resorts itself. Now it's simply sorted by the receive date, um, which is fine if that's, what you're, if that's what you're trying to look at. Turn conversations back on. The other thing is, if you notice, I have my email set to preview me one line of the email. I I like that because generally in emails, the first line is kind of like the most important one. It tells me immediately what I need to do. You know, here's an agreement, here's a fee proposal, here's a link I need to follow. So for me, one line is great. That's all I need to see. And if there's more to it, I can just open the email to view more. That's in here in the message preview widget. When you click on that, you've got the option of one, two, or three lines, and then off if you don't want any preview whatsoever. My preference is for the one line. It gives me just enough info, and it's wide so that I can see the whole one line. You can also use the reading pane off to the right here. I know, I know some people like to have a reading pane turned on. That works too. That's going to preview you the whole email. Um, it, it's a different way of looking at your email. I don't necessarily want to preview every email. As long as I can see that first line, I'm happy. So that's something that you can toggle on and off really quickly right up here in the ribbon. I'm going to turn that back off. Message preview. OK, the other thing that's just really nice about Outlook is the ability to modify these subject lines. Very handy when somebody has changed the conversation. Uh, maybe an email started out on one topic and changed along the way, and, and you need to make sure that the subject line is edited. If you open an email oops, on my other screen, 
you open the email, the subject line right here can be modified just by typing over what's in there. If you are in this field and it's not letting you edit, come over here to the right and this little itty bitty arrow, make sure that it's pointing up. If it's pointing down, I don't know why, but if it's pointing down, you will not be able to edit this field. So if you've had frustrations with your subject lines not editing, it was probably just this little expand the menu option here, and then you can edit this field. You will need to hit save, although if you just close this email, Outlook will prompt you for it. So, you know, it'll just, do you want to save the changes? And we'll hit yes. So now the subject line has been modified on that one. I use that a lot to fix typos. Um, people will send an email chain out with a incorrectly spelled name, and I have a lot of rules set up, and if the name is not spelled right, my rules won't work. So I will correct the subject lines to make sure that uh, my behind the scenes rules are working. Categories is another way that you can manage your incoming email and tag things with different categories. I don't use a whole lot of them, but they can be useful depending on what kinds of things you're tracking in your email. So as an example, um, I do HR. So I get a lot of resumes, I talk to a lot of recruiters, um, I place ads in newspapers and so forth. I have those emails all going into one general recruiting folder, but I have some categories set up so that when an email from a recruiter comes in, he gets a special category tag and then I can sort by that and quickly find the email. Um, I'm gonna just add one here to Kurt's email. I'm gonna tag him as SDA. That was a simple right click. And I have this already set up as a category. If you need to add a category, you come in here to all categories. This is fully editable. You can make as many categories as you want, associate colors, you can delete ones you don't use. Um, but it's a, it's a way of tagging your email so that you can then sort, group, and view by the category. Now that I have a category, I could click up here on the column header and sort by that. I could also right click and group by this field. So now if I grouped by categories, I'm gonna have a whole bunch that are uncategoried and I'll have one that's got an SDA in it. So this might be handy for tracking contracts or projects or client names or whatever. There's lots of ways that you can use categories uh, to tag your emails. Um, for me, folders work better. So I have a lengthy list of folders here on the right hand side that my email has and they're all subfolders to my inbox. So they're all coming into my email and then I either manually file or I have rules set up that will file my emails into these folders accordingly. If you're not using the subfolders, they are easy to add. You just right click on your inbox and go to new folder. I'm gonna add one for Kurt. He's gonna be my guinea pig. That easy. Now I have a folder for Kurt. I can do all kinds of things with this folder. I can drag and drop an email like this one that he sent me or I could set up a rule. Um, I can move this around the list too and this is important to know. This list is Outlook just default adds them to the top usually, and then sometimes it will alphabetize for you. Um, I've kind of had it do both. You can drag these around though. So you can put your most important folders up at the top. Like I'm keeping an eye on a bunch of King County contracts that our office has. So I have that one way up at the top of my list. And I'm gonna put Kurt right below King County. No offense, Kurt. You can just simply drag it and drop it down the line and you can watch as it is inserted anywhere in my list here, wherever I want to put this folder. So you can rearrange these to suit your viewing needs. Um, it's very easy to do. If you want to get rid of a folder, again, a right click and then delete the folder. It's as easy as that. It's, it's really a piece of cake. Um, so if you decide you no longer want a folder, easy to get rid of, renaming it. If you rename a folder and you have rules associated with it, Outlook will be smart enough to fix all those rules, so you can rename folders too. Folders, check. All right, here is a downside to nested folders and how you can work around that. So I mentioned I have a bunch of King County contracts I'm keeping an eye on. I'm gonna expand this. You can add nested folders to a nested folder. You can keep nesting folders out as far as you want. Um, 
by default, Outlook will not show you in the parent folder how many unread emails you have in the child folders. That's, a, that's an Outlook limitation and they don't have uh, a way to you know, turn that on or off. It is important to me that I see if anything comes into any of these six, five contracts that I'm keeping an eye on without having to have this folder expanded all the time. I don't need to have it expanded all the time. So I set a search parameter on this folder and made it a favorite. All right, so what that means is, and uh, we'll do this with, uh, which folder can we do this with? We'll do this with this one right here, resumes and hiring. We're gonna scroll all the way down to the bottom of the window, search folders. I want a new search folder, okay? I'm creating a custom one. You can create a stock one that's going to group all of your unread emails or, or whatever. It's gonna create a special search folder for you. And if you expand this, whoops, it's not gonna let me. I'm gonna do that again. If you expand this little arrow down here at the very bottom, you'll see it's already got some pre-loaded search folders. These italicized ones are ones that Outlook comes with. Um, and you can set these up to capture certain mails that come in, but I want a special one. And here's my King County one. I'm gonna create another one like, like that. If we go into search folders, I wanna create a customized one. So I'm gonna scroll to the bottom. I want a custom search folder because what I want is I want to be able to quickly see the total number of unread emails in a folder that also has nested folders. I wanna override Outlook's predisposition to not show that to me. So I'm gonna create a custom search folder. I'm gonna go in here and I'm gonna pick my own criteria. And I'm gonna call this uh, resume unread. Okay, that's what I'm gonna call this particular search that I'm creating. And now I have to tell it where to look. And I don't want it to look in my parent email folder. That's not what I want. I want it to only come in here and look at my resume folder. Okay, so I'm gonna uncheck the primary and only check the secondary set of folders, which will include all of the child folders that are in there. So it's going to then tell me everything that's in all of these folders. Okay, I'm gonna hit okay. But now I have to tell it what to search. So I've picked my folder, I've called it something, and now I have to give it the criteria that it's going to use. And what I want is I want it to tell me unread emails only. So under more choices, and I don't know, on the default one here, or the primary tab here, you can, you can set your parameters for whatever you want. So if you were trying to keep an eye on your email and you wanted to create a search that always showed you an email from a certain person or with a certain subject line, you can do that. That's a different way of organizing it. You can also set it up by criteria, but what I want is I wanna see the unread emails that are nested in that whole chain of folders. So this is what I'm gonna turn on. I'm gonna hit okay. And then it'll tell you what you've done. I've named it, resumes unread. My criteria is to show me what's not been read and this is where it's gonna look for all of that. And I'm gonna hit okay and hit okay. Okay, it's now down here. This is now my new folder. I've got 26 unread <laughs> emails in that particular folder. I'm gonna add it as a favorite, which means now it's up here. So now, it tells me that in this nested chain of folders I have for resumes and hiring, the top level folder only has three unreads, but buried down in some of my others, and I've got a lot, I've got an extra one. If you add all those up together, now it shows me I've got a total of 26 unread emails in this entire chain of folders. So if you're trying to keep an eye on something like that and you don't wanna have your nested folders open all the time, this is a workaround that works really great in Outlook. Okay, hopefully that made sense. All right, next on my list is just a little reminder that Outlook will try to help you. It will suggest things for attachments and that can be really handy if you're in a, a, chain, of, uh, a chain of work. You know, you're emailing people and you wanna send a contact to somebody or you wanna attach a file and it was a file you were just working on if you open an email like this one from Kurt, I'm gonna hit reply. 
when you go to attach item, it's going to find you the most recent things that you've dealt with. So under files, it's going to show me the most recent files that I've accessed. This, this webinar was the last thing I accessed. It's going to try to make your job easy. You don't have to browse out through a file. You don't have to have this open on another screen. Uh, remember that Outlook will try to help you. Attach an item for sending a business card. It will show you the last few people that you searched for in your contacts. So again, it's going to try to help you. I looked up Judy just for fun. And um, I could quickly insert Judy's contact and send this to Kurt if he needed it without having to go browse out through my contact list and find her and attach it that way. So just remember that Outlook has some nice, helpful things that it will try to, try to make easier for you. I don't actually need to do that. I think Kurt knows how to find Judy. All right, the other thing in your basic email if you spend a lot of time in email, or maybe you spend a lot of time in something else and you don't want your email to be disturbing you, like you're focused in on a contract and you just don't want those little email notifications to pop up every time you get one, that's a super simple thing to go change. Out here in the left, down under options, you can change the notifications that come up for you under mail, and it's right here under message arrival. And you can see I've turned off just about everything on mine. Um, Outlook likes to give you lots of little pop-ups. A big bar will slide in from the right. It'll ding if you've got your speakers on. Every time you get an email, let me tell you, that gets really annoying if you get a lot of emails. So I've actually turned off all but just this, this one little envelope icon. I get a tiny little thing in the very bottom window, and that's the only indication I have that I've gotten a new email. So you can turn these on or off, whatever makes it easier for you. Um, if you want to be keeping an eye on that or if you find it distracting, just turn that off. Turn that noise off. The other thing in the options that I have turned on is to empty out my deleted items folder every time I close my Outlook. And I do that for a few reasons. Um, one, it forces me to manage what I delete. If I delete it, it truly needs to be gone and off my plate and out of my mind. And if that's the case, I certainly don't need to be keeping copies of it in my deleted items folder. And anybody who's had to manage Outlook email limitations for people know that you can fill up your quota on the mail server. So the deleted items folder is something that needs to be emptied out periodically. I just have mine do it every time I close my Outlook and I never have to think about it. If you wanna turn that on, it's under options and advanced. Right here, this little checky box empty that folder every time I close Outlook. It's just an easy way to not spend time doing that one little tiny task. Just be sure that when you delete something, you really want it to be gone. <laughs> All right, those are a couple of settings I wanted to show you, make sure you knew about. The other settings that I have here under basics is for the quick access toolbar and the ribbon. Now the quick access toolbar is a nice feature in, in Microsoft suite. This works in all of their programs, Word, Excel, Outlook. This little guy up here is called the Quick Access Toolbar. This is where you can put the things that you do frequently and make them a one-touch button. So you can see up here, I have print, I have a search field, and I have refresh. For me, those are the things that I, I seem to do a lot. I print a lot of emails and I refresh frequently to make sure that my emails are coming in. And I added this search people. This little drop down here lets you customize the quick access toolbar. It will show you a list of the most frequently accessed options, but there's more, there's, there's way more, and you can go in and choose a lot of things. This find a contact, I find really useful. The way I use this is if I'm emailing somebody like my boss, and he says, oh, I need you to set up a meeting with such and such a person at such and such a time. I'm in my email already. I'm already emailing my boss. Rather than having to come out here to contacts and, and you know make a few extra clicks, having this little search thing up here lets me just type this person's name in here and I stay within the same screen. And Outlook will then search from my email. It will go out and search my contacts and find me this person that I put up in here. So as a way of reducing the number of steps you have to take, this is a field I really like to have right here in my inbox. Um, makes it easy for me to find contacts because that's, that's one of the things I spend a lot of time doing. You can set this quick access toolbar to be up here in the corner or you can move it down below. That was an option right here, show below the ribbon. I like to keep it up on the top there, but if you've got a lot of 
things that you want to keep in the quick access toolbar, you can always move it down. You can also customize this ribbon. This ribbon here, if you need some additional tabs or you don't want a tab, you can get rid of it. Again, with streamlining what you see, get rid of the clutter. If you right click on the ribbon anywhere, you can come in here and customize the ribbon. You can also just collapse it entirely if you never use it. Um, you would get a little symbol up here then to get it back. But you can come in here to customize the ribbon and it's gonna show you what you've got turned on, show you all the subfolders, um, show you all these things. There's a popular list of commands that you can add. You can, you can find all kinds of commands out there that uh, you didn't even know existed. <laughs> um, I've turned off, here's one I've turned off, journals. I don't use journals in Outlook, so I just turned that one off. I don't even need that tab showing up in my, in my ribbon. Um, so you can come in here and get rid of things that you don't need to see. You can also create a new tab, make a custom tab if you're into that, put what you want on it. I have never done that, but I know that you can, and uh, it works pretty well if you've got a special set of rules or a special set of tasks that you follow and uh, you want to make them quick and you don't want to have to scroll through a bunch of ribbons or a bunch of uh, tabs on the ribbon, I should say. All right, I'm going to close this. Not sure if you noticed. Let's see here. Oh, yeah, there we go. We're good. Looking for something. This ribbon, don't be afraid of the ribbon. The ribbon's got a lot of things in here, and I know a lot of people don't bother using these little icons, but they can really save you some steps. So here's this email from Kurt, and I want to set up a meeting with Kurt. This little tiny widget here shows me with one click I can start a meeting request for uh, for a certain time with Kurt without having to open the email and then forward it or reply with a meeting request. Um, cuts out a click or two just from this ribbon right here. So don't be afraid of using the ribbon. It's got some really handy things all up in here. I like the respond with a ribbon, or respond with a meeting rather. It saves me a few steps. Okay, I'm gonna move on to what I call make your life easier in email. All right, we're gonna start a new email. And there's some neat features in Outlook that uh, it took me a long time to learn about, and I can't believe I went as long as I did without using them. One of them is inserting quick parts. So I'm going to send an email to Kurt. He can be my guinea pig. Okay, I send a lot of emails with invoice attachments, or I used to. And when you're sending an invoice, you generally type the same thing, you know, something like, attached is your invoice for services we just provided. Please pay us as soon as you can. If you're typing the same thing over and over and over again, make it a quick part, okay? Under the Insert tab here, there's this little widget called Quick Parts. It lets you save and then insert text. So I have one set up for accounts payable. Here you go, I'm sending an invoice to accounts payable. There's my little blurb. I just hit send and away it goes. And I don't have to type this thing 100 times. I don't have to worry about typos. It's all done, ready to go. If you wanna make a new quick part, you type what you want. Okay, it is our most recent edition of blank, 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 okay. So here's an email I'm gonna send out. Maybe I'm fundraising, maybe I'm calling for bids on something and I wanna get a bunch of quotes and I have a bunch of stock data that I wanna just send out to 12 different people and I don't wanna type it a bunch of times and maybe I'm gonna send it over and over again. Type it out, type what you want, highlight it, come up here to Quick Parts, save selection to the Quick Parts gallery. This is gonna create a new one. You can give it a name. You can set a category. You can give it a brief description, which you will see, but nobody else will see. And when you hit okay, this is now a new quick part that I have called Dear, Sus Dear Subscriber. So again, if you're starting a new email that you're gonna have the same blurb in, insert quick parts, you've got that, oh, now it's in there twice you've got that bit of text without having to retype it. So that can be a big time saver if you send the same thing over and over and over again. Um, I like that part quite a bit. Also, if you're fairly new to Outlook, um, you can change what shows up up here in the top of your emails. I don't usually have the BCC line on. Um, that's one that I turn on and off as needed. That's under options here. And you can turn on that blind carbon copy field or off. If you don't need it, turn it off, shorten your view. 
there's also a way that you can change who your email comes from. And this is a, a slippery slope because this, is, this lets a lot of spammers through the email filters. By default, when you send an email, Outlook's gonna show the person who the email's coming from. When they hit reply, it's gonna go back to that person and all is well in the world. You can change this. You can change who the email looks like it comes from. So one way that I do use this is when I'm replying to an ad that comes in through like LinkedIn or something. And I don't really want my email address out there in the world. I want to use our HR email. So if I'm sending an email to somebody who applied for our job, but I don't want them to have my email yet, <laughs> I can come in here and change the from. So now when I send this email, it's going to come from this HR at magnet.com email that I have. So if they hit reply, it's going to come back to the HR email. I have some rules set up, it's gonna auto file it, et cetera, and my email is not out there getting fished. Um, it's a very handy thing you can do. You can also have replies directed back to something other than the from email. So say you are sending out an inquiry for something, a quote or a, you're trying to organize an event, but you want the RSVPs to go to somebody else. So like in my case, if I'm sending out an inquiry on, on an office function, but I actually want the RSVPs to go to our admin assistant, I can click that right here, direct replies to, and I can say send those replies to somebody else. And that way, even if you put in there, please send replies to somebody else, if a lot of people don't read that and they're just going to hit reply or even reply all, you can just change this. Um, this is really handy if you've got an IT department that can set up temporary email accounts for you. So maybe you want to have them set up one that's something kind of generic, then you can have replies sent back to that generic email rather than back to your own inbox. Um, again, just a, a way to keep the keep stuff out of your inbox if you don't really need to deal with it. Have the replies go somewhere else. It's nice if you tell the person though. Okay. So that's replies to turning on or changing the from field, turning on or off the BCC field. So all things that you can do under the options tab here. This is the same place you would add delivery receipts or re read receipts. Now these ones aren't foolproof because people can also set up in their own preferences to never <laughs> reply to those. But um, if you're trying to track delivery of an email chain, um, you can turn on either delivery or read receipts and get back a little notification on whether or not your email was opened. You can also delay the delivery of the email. So if you want something to go out, but not until five o'clock, you know, I don't want it, I don't want this person calling me during business hours. I want to send it at the end of the day so that they can't possibly get a hold of me. You can delay this. Come in here, set the time you actually want this email to go out. Do not deliver before five o'clock. You can get your emails all queued up, all ready to go, and then they'll just all go at the end of the day or whatever time you set in here. That's kind of nice sometimes. Voting buttons. If you're trying to get consensus on something, the voting buttons option works pretty well. Um, Voting buttons don't show up on mobile devices though, so if you have a lot of people that read your emails on their phones, um, the voting buttons don't work as well as they used to when everybody was tied to their desktops. So that's when I use less and less, but it is still an option. You can add um, you know, little check boxes for people if you're trying to get a yay or nay on something. All right, I'm gonna close this email because it's not something I really wanna send to Kurt. Okay. Next on my list, rules. Rules are great. I like rules. Rules are what helps me keep my inbox flowing pretty well with things auto-filing into all of these subfolders without me having to intervene. And that's one of my favorite things. Um, uh, with the amount of email I get every day, if they all just dumped in here to my inbox and I had to hand file them, it would take me forever. So I have a bunch of rules set up with varying requirements to auto file for me. Rules are awesome. They live up here in this little home tab. Um, this is where they live once you set them up and setting them up is really easy. So this email from Kurt, I'm going to set up a new rule for Kurt. I'm going to set up a new rule. I'm going to come down. I right clicked, right click on the email. I'm going to come down here to rules and the default is going to be always move messages from Kurt. 
that's the default because that's what people usually want to do with their email is move it somewhere else. You can do that and make it one that's all it's going to do, but you can also create additional rules around that. You can customize these rules. I'll show you what that looks like. And the reason that this is really nice is if you might need multi tiered rules, like you might want to move all, all emails from Kurt, but only if it contains certain subject items. So I don't want all of my emails from Kurt to go, I was going to put them in this Kurt folder, but maybe I only want the ones that include the word invoice. Okay. So you can, you can really customize this um, to be whatever you want it to be. You can even set a certain display uh, display a new item alert, you, which will override the options that you've already set up in your like whole Outlook options. If you want to make sure that you never miss an email from Kurt and you want to turn this on, you can do that in here. And then I will get that big window that comes up and says, you've got a new email. Um, so you can, you can create a specialized rule here. I'm just going to create this one. And now I have to tell it where to move it. So I'm going to come in here choose this folder I made, hit OK. So now what it's going to do, and it's a chain, it's going to say move every email from Kurt as long as the subject contains the word invoice, put it in this folder. So it does work in a top to bottom method. The rules do, they'll apply top down. That's important to remember. I'm going to hit OK. It's going to run this email now in my inbox. And now it's going to screen in order, look at all the emails from Kurt first and then look at the ones that have invoice in the subject line is going to move them into this folder for me. This, this setting up the rule, this is a one-time thing. From here on out, they'll just happen immediately and you'll never see it on your screen. Once that's done, I'm going to show you how to modify this rule. And it's taken a while because I have a lot of emails for it to go through and look at. <laughs> okay. So now that rule's in place. It took that email out of my inbox. It's now over here in this folder I created, okay? It also, if you notice, grabbed a bunch of other emails that I had um, from him somewhere in my inbox that had the word invoice in it. So it went through and found all those for me and filed them, which is awesome. If you need to change that rule, like uh, say I no longer want to that subject line to be auto filed for me, you come in here to manage rules and alerts, and it's going to show you all the rules you have set in place. I've got, I've got a number of them. And applied in the order shown. So as emails come in, it's a hierarchy. The first thing Outlook's going to do is say, does this rule apply? Nope. OK. Does this rule apply? Nope. OK. And it's going to go down the list. So this is important because if you've got a multi-step rule that you want to have applied, you need to make sure it's in the right order. So, for example, I have a rule set up to move some SDA stuff into my SDA folder, but I didn't want all emails from Kurt to go in there because he's an employee and I did not want everything from, you know, that's work related going into this folder. So I had to make sure that I have to make sure that this rule for this person is at the top of my list so that this is applied before any rule I have farther down the list that has a different criteria applied to it. So just keep that in mind, um, that it will work top down. All right, I have a lot of rules. If you want to modify a rule, just change it. Come right here to this little thing, change this rule. It's going to show you a preview down here of what this rule is doing. So if you can't remember, it will show you. These are hot link things. So if you need to change this, you could just modify it right here too. If I want to add the word maybe unpaid. I'm going to add the word unpaid. So now it's going to look for both of those words in the rule when I get an email from that person and apply it. And it will show you exactly what it's doing. So if you're not sure, easy to come in here and modify what your rule is doing. If you want to change where it goes, just click on this and it'll, it'll bring you up your folder list and you can file it somewhere else pretty easily. You can turn rules off without removing them. So if, um, you know, somebody... <laughs> I don't know, changes departments that they're working in. You're not quite sure you want to delete the rule entirely, but you don't want it running anymore. You can just turn it off and it just hangs out there in your list so that you can come in here and turn it back on later if you decide to. But if you just don't want it anymore, just delete the whole rule and um, it'll, come out, it'll come out of your list, no problem. Hit OK. All right, that was rules. 
All right, the other thing, the other thing, they're all the other things. As far as reducing the number of clicks you need to make to get something done, this quick steps box right here, was another thing that took me a long time to really become a fan of and now that I am I can't believe it uh, didn't come up sooner these quick steps are just that they are one click ways of doing something um, you can see I've got a few that are already programmed what I have set up here is a distribution list a one click distribution list when I click that it's going to start an email for me that goes to our entire SDA board of directors this year for example, um, I have a distribution list set up and rather than having to go find it or you know, search through the address book, I just set it up as a quick step right here. I also, one of the things that I do a lot is I forward invoices to somebody else in the office to print. So I have this set up as a, as a quick forward. So um, if I wanted to forward this email without opening it, I can just hit this button and it will do that right away. So it will take away that extra click of having to open the email. Also, I don't know if you've noticed that real quick, I have some text pre-filled. So when I forward this email to this person, that text pre-fills so that I don't have to spend that time. All I have to do is hit the word send and away it goes. Okay, so I got a question in the chat box real quick about rules. So I'll back up a half step. The question is, do rules only fire when an email comes in or can you have a rule run on a two week old email without intervention? So rules will run as emails come in. That's how they work is as they come in. You can force run it too though. If you set up a rule that you want to retroactively go run that you have to come into this manage rules and alert and there's a box that says run rules now. Okay, so if I set, I set this one up today and I have emails from weeks ago that didn't get caught by this because I just set this up, I could run this rule now and it will go back and find all of your emails, all of them, all the way back to run the rule on and then it will file them for you. So if you, if you think you've missed one, you can come in here and run them on the fly. You do have to do that on your own though. It won't, uh, it won't go back and find them for you little bit of intervention needed but not too bad okay back to these quick steps to set up a new one um, so I have a I have a distribution email I have a forward to somebody with a few texts and then I have a reply and delete because that's also something I do I get a lot of invoices in my inbox and I usually reply with a quick received thanks kind of thing so that they know I got their invoice but then I also have to delete that invoice or delete that email so with a reply and delete, that's exactly what this will do. If I have this email, I click reply and delete, it's gonna start a reply and it's gonna delete this thing right from my inbox so that I don't have to then delete it. So it, it's a, I'm not gonna hit it right now because I don't wanna delete this email. But uh, these are quick ones, quick buttons. This create a new is how you set those up. You call it whatever you want. Um, so if you set, send a lot of emails to your boss, this choose an action here and then you see add an action you can add steps so the first thing I want to do I want to create a little button that lets me forward an email to my boss forward is the first thing I want it to do I'm gonna hit forward then I'm gonna tell it who to forward it to okay oh Let's see we'll let find somebody I'll just pick Kurt Okay, so that's what it's gonna do. And then I can add actions. So I wanna forward it to somebody. And then I wanna do some other things. I also wanna move it to a folder. So I wanna forward this to somebody. I wanna forward it. I'm gonna file it into the folder. But I also want to mark it as red. Okay, all these things I want to happen all in one click from a new quick step that I'm gonna set up in here. But I also wanna add some text. Let's see here. Oh, that's not what I wanted. Copy, mark, reply, reply with meaning. All right, I'm overlooking it at the moment. We're gonna skip that one. All right, point is you can set up whatever steps that you normally take with an email. You can make them a one click command in this quick steps thing here. And uh, by hitting finish, I now have a 
quick step that will let me forward an email. And it puts these little icons on here, makes it pretty easy to see what you have set up. You can set up different kinds. So if you want to, if you hover over this little bar here, you can set up a new distribution email. So like this one that says SDA BOD, that's an email to a distribution list that is right here, new email to. And so if you, you know, have a group or a person that you email all the time, you can set up a quick pick for that person and uh, have it start for you right here from this little quick picks box. These are, the, these are the ones that I have set up. This little corner box will show you all of the quick steps you have, done, you have created. You can edit them, just like with rules. You can edit them, um, delete them, you know, get rid of them if they're not working for you and so forth. So this is a, a nice little feature to remember up there in the top ribbon. The search feature in Outlook is quite nice. You can, um, you can search just quickly, just, uh, just for one word perhaps or you know something you can you can do a one a one level search and it's going to find everything in your email the default is your entire mailbox okay and this is something that uh is good to remember so the default search is going to search your entire inbox which is everything from your name on down but if you don't want it to search that deeply you can limit where it's going to search if you just want it to be in the top level folder only it will then search only in the top level folder. If you want to search a subfolder only, it will then only search subfolders and so forth. You can change where the search is happening right here on the side and your, your search will adjust accordingly. The other thing is you can be very granular with your searches. Once you click in the search box, a new tab opens up in your own. It only shows up when you're in the search box, but once you're there, you've got all these other things that you can add to your search criteria. You can search by who it was sent to, or if you were a CC on an email, you can narrow down the range of dates for when something was sent or received. If it has an attachment, um, you know, so here it's gonna add these little tags, search tags. So now it's searching invoices that have attachments, and that's what it's gonna return in my search criteria is, is um, what I have set there. Clicking that again turns that back off. So you can add other properties um, depending on how your emails come in. You can even do attachment containing certain subject lines. So you can be very detailed on your search criteria here um, if you're looking for something in your inbox that you've lost sight of. Um, just uh, these search features are really nice. So just uh, keep an eye on those. As soon as you click in the search box, it will bring that up for you. All right, we're doing pretty good on time. I got about 12 minutes, or no, 22 minutes. I'm gonna check the chat box real quick here, see what's in there. Oh, rules. Okay, so we're doing okay. All right. Mm -hmm. All right, a few things on calendars and contacts. Um, if you're managing multiple calendars, there are some nice things to know about or, or remember that you're using. Calendars down here, I'm gonna click on that icon, switch over to calendars, okay? I've got several, I've got some shared calendars for people in the office, I've got some public calendars set up on our network for all employees. Okay, oh, I'm gonna take a half step back, sorry, sorry. I'm gonna go back to mail, there's a question on the search. So a string of words like board of directors in a search, it's a Boolean search, you add quote marks. So you add quote marks around the thing that you definitely don't want broken up into separate words. And that is what is then gonna search. And here you find the whole phrase. So quotes will do the entire search. And on the flip side, an asterisk will be a partial word. Um, so uh, if you wanna make sure that you catch any misspellings, like maybe somebody types the word directors instead of directors, you could type D-I-R asterisk and then it will search for everything that starts with DIR and then has some other letters in there, which would include director, it would include some other things in my, in my inbox here. So um, asterisk is a wild placement and then quotes will give you a full phrase. So that's how you could make sure that you're searching everything you wanna search for. All right, make sense? And then it highlights where that, in, where that instance happened in that email that it pulled up for you. Quotes, quotes are your friend. 
All right, I'm going to go back over to calendar. Incidentally, you can search in any of these sections of Outlook, too. You can search calendars, contacts, and email. They all work the same. As soon as you click in that search box, you're going to get this search window, and you can search whatever you want. I search calendars all the time for past appointments that I can't remember when something happened. So if I had a, a meeting with a particular vendor or something, and I can't remember when that was, I come in here to my calendar, and I just search for it. And uh, as long as I have, you know, something right in the search, it'll it'll pull pull up all the instances of that in the calendar. So it's a it's a handy little thing I use too. So in calendars, if you are looking at more than one calendar, and I usually do, um, these little overlay arrows will stack your calendars so that you can watch for conflicts. So appointment conflicts. If you're trying to schedule somebody and you are watching their calendar and you need to know if they're in or out or if they've already got something scheduled, overlay the calendars will quickly show you where you might have a conflict. Um, you can overlay one, two, three, however many your eyes can hold and your screen will show you. Um, so it's a quick click of this button here in the top left of the tabs of each of the calendars that you have active. You can set the colors of each calendar. So if you are, you know, really wanting to keep an eye on something in particular and, and gray doesn't suit you, you can change the calendar color just by right clicking on it and coming down here to color and changing it to something maybe a little bit more eye catching. Um, easy enough to do there. These, like I said, these are public calendars. These are ones that our whole office has access to. And then I have shared calendars, which are individual calendars. So you guys all know that Outlook gives you two sets. You've got you've got your personal ones that only you can access unless you know they're shared. And then you've got um, if you're set up with public folders in your Outlook, then you've got these shared ones. Um, shared calendars show up in their own section than um, the other calendars, which is okay. It just groups them, which I find actually kind of helpful. In Outlook calendars, there's a difference between appointment and meeting. If you are just putting something on a calendar that nobody's going to, it's an appointment. So a doctor's appointment, um, a PTA appointment, a, a, a meeting that is only for you, that's an appointment. Think of it like putting something in your day planner. A meeting includes other people. So if you have a meeting, there should be other people invited to it. And they are handled a little differently in Outlook. So it's just a, a good reminder that there are the two different definitions of, of uh, calendar items that you can have. On my own personal calendar here on the left, um, you know, adding an appointment is as simple as double clicking on the day and uh, filling in the information. Outlook, again, is trying to be helpful. So if I double clicked on, um, on a square at the beginning here, it's going to assume I want a meeting at 8 o'clock. If I double click down here towards the end of the day, it's going to assume I want a meeting at 4 o'clock. So it will try to pre-fill that stuff. So if you just are a little bit more careful with where you, you know, where you decide to start your double click to start a new calendar appointment, then you don't have to come in here and pick all the times. And in fact, you can just do one. I'm going to set up a test appointment. Oh, yes, I want to save that. I can drag to extend the time without having to adjust it in that initial um, appointment too. So if this becomes a three hour appointment, I can simply grab it, grab the bottom and drag it and it will adjust the time parameter for me without having to take the time to drill down through these little, you know, what time is it going to start? You can also just type in these fields. Well, that's not going to help me. If you're a quick typer and you would rather just type seven o'clock, you can hit, you can do that and hit tab and it will just pre-fill it rather than scrolling through these um, times too. So depending on how you work on the keyboard, that might be faster than uh, trying to find it. I'm going to delete that. Okay, in your personal calendar, if you are sharing your calendar with people, you can set private appointments so that even if you're sharing your calendar, I know there's some hesitation amongst people to share their calendars because you don't want everybody to see your doctor's appointments and such, you can set it as a private appointment. This little lock symbol that's in the bottom of these, that is a private appointment, which means that anybody I share my calendar out to will see that I have a block of time that I'm unavailable, but they won't know why. It'll just say, I'm busy. Okay, so that's a good way of sharing your calendar without worrying that you're sharing too much. I set, I set this one on private just, just to show you. Um, <laughs> it doesn't really matter to me. So here's one. I'm going to start a new one. I'm going to start a coffee date. 
email and we're going to go to Tully's tomorrow. But I don't want anybody to know that I'm going to have coffee tomorrow. So I'm going to hit this little private button up here in the right. Okay, it's going to show up on my calendar now. I save and close. I now have an appointment to have coffee for half an hour tomorrow morning, but it's a private appointment and nobody who can see my calendar will know exactly what I'm doing. They'll just know that I'm out of the office for that half hour. There are, uh, there's lots of times you may not want people to know what you're doing, but you want to show it on your calendar. So if you're, if you are using this, it's a nice feature to, to be aware of. Um, if you are sharing your calendar, if you need to share it out to somebody, you right click and you go to share. You can share your calendar to anybody who has Outlook, really, um, and you send it to whomever you'd like. It's going to pre-fill a pre-fill a subject line, and it's going to pre-fill availability only. So by default, Outlook is going to protect your privacy. By default, it's only going to show if you're available or busy or, or something. You can add details. So if you do want to share details, you want your admin to know exactly where you are, you can add additional levels of access. Limited details will just show the title of the appointment, but nothing else. Full, de full details will show the entire thing, everything that's in there. Um, so you can, you can change the access that you're given to somebody when you share your calendar out. But by default, Outlook will try to try to hide stuff for you. So um, that's a simple thing to do. Um, I would encourage you, if you're trying to manage somebody's calendar, have them share it out to you. And uh, that way you can see it right down here in your list of shared calendars and quickly be able to see when they're available or not. So copying invites between calendars is as simple as dragging and dropping. Um, Again, Outlook's going to be helpful, and it's going to drop it in the same time slot in all your calendars. I just dragged that from my calendar to these two calendars, and by default, Outlook put it in the exact same place. You don't have to worry about putting it in the wrong spot. So that's a nice thing. It's easy to copy items from one calendar to another um, just across the board here when you've got them laid out. When you're scheduling a meeting with somebody, inviting attendees, up here is how you turn an appointment into a meeting. And they actually then call it a meeting. Um, once you have people in there, it is now a meeting. It's on my calendar and it will go to Kurt on his calendar and he can accept the appointment and it becomes a meeting on his calendar as well. Very easy to add people. There's another way to add a meeting from your email and this is very handy. So back to my inbox, I want to set up a meeting with, let's see, I'm going to come down here to this one. Okay, so if you've been in an email conversation with several people, four or five people, and it got to a point where somebody said, you know what, we just need to meet on this, this email nonsense is taking too long. I want to set up an appointment quickly with all of the people that are in this email chain. This one had four, okay? If I grab this email and I simply drag it down, 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 and I drop it into my calendar, it's going to start an appointment. And it's going to start an appointment at the next available time. So it's going to start one immediately, one o'clock today, with these people. Okay. And I'm sorry, it's going to set it. There we go. It's setting up an appointment. My bad an appointment because I dragged it to my calendar and when it's on my calendar, it's going to say appointment. However, what it does when you drag it from your email is it preserves the entire email chain that was going on. So if there is some information that you guys have been talking about that you want to have in this invite so that everybody's on the same page, dragging it from your inbox down to a calendar will start an invite and then include all of that email correspondence so that it's all contained within the same calendar invite. So very handy um, if you're trying to close the loop on a conversation. You can also, from within an, in, within an email, reply with a meeting request, okay? It does the same thing. It will then send a meeting request to all the people, include the whole email chain, and let you set up the, the meeting requirements, okay? So if you drag it from your inbox, it's an appointment. If you open the email and reply with a meeting, it becomes a meeting. So there's a couple of, just depends on what you need to do with that email um, as far as a calendar invite. I'm gonna pop back in here to calendar real quick. What's that? 
time check, one o'clock, running a few minutes late. I hope you guys are okay. I don't have a whole lot more. I'll go faster. Quick question on will full details show your private appointments? Yes, it will. <laughs> so on the calendar, if you're sharing your calendar with full details and you've given that person like full access, yeah, it will. It will show the details of the appointment. So um, do keep that in mind. That's the whole point of the limited availability right there at the top. Um, Okay, let's see, calendars, 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 reading pane. You can turn on the reading pane in calendars. I don't know if you knew that. You can turn on the reading pane on the right. And what that does is then when you click on an item in the calendar, it will show you everything about it on the right. So like this particular webinar that we're in today had all of this info in here. If I click on that, it's gonna show it to me off on the right without having to open the calendar invite. So remember that that reading pane is in your thing under view. Um, last thing I had on my list was in contacts. Um, contacts, not a whole lot, other than you want to make sure that this is viewing the best way that suits you. I have mine set to view by full name, and you can change all of these under the view tab, change view, manage views, okay? I have business contacts, but under manage view, I have mine set to show me by full name. You can have this showing you by last name, by first name, by company, by whatever you want, but make sure that this is, is, is displaying in the way that will help you with how you use contacts. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and do one more thing and then we'll be done. The other thing in contacts with the meeting request is you can do a quick meeting request to somebody once you've found them in contacts, again, with these little widgets up here in your ribbon bar. So remember that those are up there. You found a contact, you want a quick meeting, you click the meeting, it's gonna start it, and you don't have to do the extra steps of going back out to your calendar. You can start a meeting from directly within the contacts here. All right, sorry to rush the end there. That was, took a little longer than I thought. Um, I hope that was helpful. I hope that uh, you guys learned something. Um, somebody asked real quick if I prefer the one line view in my message. Um, does it bother me when somebody sends you a message and the first line only says hello? <laughs> no, not too much, because that <laughs> that's okay. I don't mind. <laughs> that's kind of funny. Sometimes it's not super helpful, and you know you can always change it to two lines if you think more lines will be helpful. But uh, I get so many that. I don't know. <laughs> that puts it on a lower priority, I will tell you that, if it starts with, how are you today? Um, okay, any last questions in the chat box here? Is anybody want me to go over something real quick, or did I, I know I went through kind of the contacts a little fast, I apologize, I ran out of time. Um, anything else? Any questions? Any comments? Any any helpful bits that uh, maybe you struggled with? I'm not an expert, but um, I hopefully you picked up a few things in this that will help you. Um, I spend an awful lot of my time in Outlook, so I'm always looking for ways to be more efficient with my email, so. All right, I don't see any more questions coming in. If you do have any, I, I emailed you guys all the links, so you can just respond, and uh, I'll have your email auto-filed and get to you when I have a minute. Um, all right, I'm gonna I'm gonna close the recording here.